Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing Fight Club. This film came out in 1999. It was directed by David Fincher. Do I really need to give an introduction to Fincher at this point? I feel like I've talked to, about him to death on this channel, but I will just say, you know, as most of you know, I really do admire Fincher a lot. I think he's one of the more sophisticated mainstream commercial filmmakers in Hollywood. His attention to detail and his eye, his, his aesthetic to me is just much more meticulous and more sophisticated, more mature than most filmmakers. But it's not just in his aesthetic, it's also just in his storytelling ability. He, he knows how to tell a very good story and he knows how to structure it really well. He's very much like a modern-day Hitchcock, I've, I've said that before. I think that what's great about him though is that even though he is rooted in that kind of classical style of filmmaking, he's also um, quite modern in a sense because there are always those little digital touches throughout his films. By the time this movie came out he had already kind of made his statements before. He had made these sort of grandiose uh, allegorical tales about greed and the cynicism of modern society, the brutality of humans, etc. You know, with movies like Seven, for example. Though it's obvious that a movie like Fight Club is much more, um, it's meant to be much more aware of its themes, hence why it is very satirical, why it is very tongue-in-cheek. It reminds me a lot of The Game, which is a movie that came out a couple years prior to this movie that he made with Michael Douglas. And, you know, it, it's very similar in the sense that it is dealing with those, like, that feeling of an existential crisis and a kind of wanting to have that liberation from the norm. His films are very pulpy and they know that they are. They know that they're meant to be more kind of popcorn entertainment, but it is kind of high escapism. And I would say the same for this film, even though this film kind of explores more of the humor that, that Fincher has to offer. And I do think actually he has a lot of humor in his arsenal as an artist. But this film is also, as I said, very aware of its conceits to the point where it's more open to interpretation, at least the ending is. You can kind of draw your own conclusions for it, but of course it is still classic Fincher in the sense that it's still a very grim depiction of the world and humanity, regardless of, of what else you take away from it. Fincher makes so many sort of crime, murder, detective investigation, thriller type movies where the protagonist is trying to explore the motivations of the antagonist who did the acts. That's usually how he's going about it, but with this film it's more of an introspective sort of thing. This movie is very much about kind of the mirror metaphor, and there are quite a lot of kind of reflection mirror metaphors throughout the movie. It is taking us in the mind of the person who is causing all of the destruction, and so to me it feels much more intimate, and it's more of a, a personal discovery, a personal odyssey. And Fincher, I think, casts the perfect people for, for this movie. He casts Edward Norton, who is somebody that I greatly admire, I think one of our, our better working actors in Hollywood, and he really can do anything and be convincing. I always think, you know, he's done a lot of movies that I really admire, one of them being 25th Hour, which came out a couple years after this movie. That role, compared to this one, so different, and he is just utterly convincing both ways. In that movie, he's playing more kind of a rebel badass, and in this movie, he's playing somebody that is the very personification of the everyman. He's kind of this emasculated loser that is kind of laying on his couch and watching infomercials because he can't sleep. He buys IKEA furniture to feel as though he's an individual, when really, it's quite the opposite. These things try to make you feel like you're an individual, but all they really do is just prove to you when you really think about it, that you are earning your money so that you can continue to be a prisoner, you can continue to be a slave to corporations, and you're just you're just another part of a larger machine that just keeps on churning. And, and with this movie, the opening like 30 minutes to an hour is just, it's real zippy, it's very, very clever. And I also think it, you know, obviously it's very grim, as I said, just in terms of the color palette and all of that, like, like most Fincher movies, but I think that ironically that idea in itself, just the stylized quality and how exaggerated it is, lends itself to satire, makes it more of like a black comedy. That was something that I thought was really brilliant in Gone Girl. A lot of people fail to acknowledge that that film is has a lot of satirical elements in it, similar to this one. And it's always in the details with him. It's always those little kind of moments. And even in this movie, I like the fact that Fincher felt like he had to work in a Starbucks cup in every single scene and you try to count them and see if you can spot them all. That's not something I would have noticed unless I, you know, read the trivia about it, but that's still just a really kind of funny thing. It's a way of calling out product placement and using it for a humorous way, kind of subverting the cliche. It's that kind of humor 
mixed with the brutality and, and what's grotesque that really makes this very kind of punchy, vivid a social commentary. I really enjoy the humor in the first half of the film infinitely more than I enjoy the second half of the film. And that's just kind of a, a personal thing. I love the sequence, especially when Ed Norton is, is the character is going to all of those different meetings and he starts crying. He's crying to Bob with the bitch tits and that that whole sequence is just so hilarious because it does speak to one of the themes that sticks out the most to me at least in the movie and it's the feeling of men just feeling inadequate in a society where they have been so conditioned and they feel maybe a bit emasculated. And even having a character like Bob, I mean he literally has giant tits and so it's just it's funny it's a not so subtle metaphor of androgyny and the frustration a lot of men feel not having that masculine primal identity that they used to because there's no need for it in a civilized society and that along with so many factors in the movie lead to this need for this physical aggression and of course the physical aggression which is personified in the whole symbol of the fight club movement i guess you could say is healthy to an extent, I will say. But of course there's a lot of hypocrisy in it as we start to see as it gets bigger and bigger. Um, because the same capitalist ideas that are in the first half are mirrored in the second half. Tyler or Brad Pitt's character's need for a revolution and, and being in search of that new identity ironically causes the members to lose that identity in the pursuit of it. They become yet another clog in the machine, just as Ed Norton was at the beginning of the movie. They're all just another number. So the big question I'm asking as I'm watching this movie this last time is you know, where is the balance? Is there even an option for potential balance? Or is humanity doomed? I do like that the film doesn't feel that it needs to push you in any specific direction when it comes to the final conclusion. But I will say, throughout the movie, no matter what, you can tell, of course, that it's a push and pull. It is an internal struggle within the, the character's mind, the main character, hence the inception of Tyler Durden. Brad Pitt is just being Brad Pitt here. I never thought he was a, a great actor, but he is great at being very physical and he is very great at being charismatic and he does that perfectly here. I never really got the, the, the big twist. A lot of people talk about how that's one of the great Hollywood uh, plot twists and I, I don't know, I saw it coming a mile away. I'm not the kind of person who normally guesses things like that before everybody else, so uh, it always just kind of surprised me that people were so uh, fooled by it. To me, the film was always heading in that direction. And it was so kind of in your face the way that they were talking about it. And Tyler from the beginning has always had this sort of metaphysical presence where he never seemed like he was really there. And the clues are right in front of you, especially when you go back and watch it. You're like, how did I not see this? So for that to be the big plot twist that they seem to be relying on to an extent to me is underwhelming. For me, what's way more interesting is, is the internal struggle and more like the Freudian implications that come from the Ed Norton character and the Tyler Durden character and how all of that ties into the movie here. There are so many interesting ideas that they're tackling, you know, ones that are universal. So you've got capitalism, conformity, anarchy, the list goes on and on. I think it is very ambitious in that sense and very smug and you have to be if you're going to be a, a movie that's trying to be satirical. But, you know, honestly, when I watch this movie overall, I hadn't seen it in like 10 years or something like that. It, it never has been one of my favorite Fincher films. I know people adore it. It's one of his most famous, one of the most iconic movies of its time for sure, but it's never really resonated with me uh, in the way that it does a lot of people. Don't get me wrong, I really do like the film and I enjoyed it a lot more this time than I did when I was younger, but I think that the ideas that they are kind of employing, while they're touching on it. They're not really digging into it. Yes, they're they're mocking it and they're and they're preaching all of this stuff and there's a lot of monologuing, but rarely are they actually exploring the ideas in a way that pushes me to think about them in a different way. It's just a little surface level for me and I think that if they had pushed further, this could have been a, a really a really really great piece of work. As it stands to me, it's admirable, but I will say this was kind of semi-early in David Fincher's career and I think that he lacked a lot of the maturity that we see now in his storytelling. I personally prefer the Fincher movies that are more subtle where the themes are more interwoven into the actual story, into the plot. A movie like Zodiac, I think I reviewed it like a year ago or something like that. That's one of my, that actually no, I'll say that is my favorite Fincher film because of how it explores the romanticism of brutality. And this is done in Fight Club in, in some similar ways for sure, um, but for me 
with Zodiac, it's just way more well-rounded and there's just an elegance to it. And I feel the same about even The Social Network, which is a movie that I reviewed also not so long ago. And it is just for me, for me personally, just more mature storytelling. And a lot of the themes are similar. It's the idea of capitalism and, and threatened masculinity, but they're personified in a different way, more as kind of emotional symbols. But that being said, I did say that I, I find Fight Club to be very admirable and I do enjoy it. I enjoyed it, as I said, a lot more this last time than when I did uh, when I first saw it. It's very entertaining and just bold stylistically. It's everything that you could want from a movie. So I totally get why so many people love it and why it is just such an iconic staple of American culture. But I have just always wanted more from it. And, uh, you know, maybe part of that has to do with having seen his evolution as a filmmaker and how he's grown and made better work. I think that's probably part of it. But even so, even before that, I, I've always kind of felt like it was missing something. I don't feel like I need to recommend this movie just because everybody's seen it, but maybe there is somebody out there who uh, hasn't and I will recommend it to you so that way you just feel less awkward when people are, are quoting the movie. You'll actually know what they're talking about. <laughs> and that's my review. Thank you all for listening. All my social media information is below. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.